Greet you all in the highly exalted, wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the whole Bible tour in three years, turning our Bibles to Genesis and chapter 44. 44 is a very uh, peculiar chapter where the uh, brothers left home and uh, um, before leaving home, the uh, steward of the house was instructed by Joseph to put the silver cup of Joseph into the uh, sack of Benjamin. And uh, they all uh, stay there for the night. And in the morning, uh, the men are sent on their way along with their donkeys. And as they are returning, the steward follows them and he says, oh, What is this you have done? You have rewarded um, evil for good. Uh, why have you stolen my master's cup? And immediately uh, they would say, uh, No, we haven't done it. Um, if if uh, um, we are found guilty, the one who has the cup, uh, let him be put to death. And uh, the rest of us um, may we become the Lord's slaves. And then uh, he says, okay, and they search. And finally, they get it in uh, Benjamin's sack. All of their hearts sank at what had happened. And uh, they tore their clothes and they all returned to the city. And then uh, they stand before Joseph and Joseph says, why did you do this? That's where Judah takes over and uh, he explains the whole thing. How after he'd gone back, uh, they'd gone back, their father had asked uh, him. And then uh, uh, they told that the ruler said they cannot come back without the younger brother. And uh, father said, no, I cannot send him because he's the only one left of his mother's sons. And um, finally, um, Judah convinces him and uh, he's brought. And now um, Judah says that this boy's um, life is closely bound to the life of his father. And so if he doesn't go, then uh, the father will die. And not just that, Judah takes a great lead in interceding. And finally, he says, uh, send Benjamin and I'll take his place. I'll stay back here. Um, do whatever you want with me. So he was interceding. And he says, I don't want to see the misery of my father. So this is where we see a very stark contrast between uh, uh, Joseph's brothers previously and Joseph's brothers now. Now, if we uh, see Genesis chapter 37 and uh, verse 18 to 31, uh, we see that uh, the Bible very clearly says that there's a lot of difference because at that point of time, these people were so concerned about themselves. And uh, in verse um, 18, 37 and verse 18, it says uh, um, they saw uh, Joseph who was coming and they said, um, here comes the dreamer. Uh, come, let's kill him. That's what the brothers were telling. Let's kill him and uh, um, throw him into one of the cisterns and then uh, say that a ferocious uh, animal has devoured him. Then we'll see what will come of his dreams. We see the wild nature, the height of jealousy uh, in these brothers. They were ridiculing uh, you know, God-given dreams. Obviously, they didn't recognize it was God-given, but uh, they were ridiculing the dreams and um, they were hating the dreamer and they went to the extent of, uh, let us kill him. Uh, they were ready to shed innocent blood. They were ready to shed their own brother's blood. They were so cold-blooded and uh, they, they, they went to the extent of uh, throwing the body in one of the cisterns and just hiding it and then uh, uh, taking his robe and uh, um, killing an animal, uh, dipping it in his blood and showing it to the father, uh, telling him that a ferocious animal uh, should have killed your son, uh, creating a very clean uh, uh, script writer. Uh, these people wanted to achieve whatever they wanted. Their jealousy was raging and they wanted to do whatever it takes uh, just to appease their jealousy, to please their heart. They were ready to do away with their brother. They were ready to fool their father. They were ready to bring a great loss in the family, um, great disturbance in the family. In, in, in the process, they, they would not know if their father would really be able to take it and he would die. They were ready for anything. They were ready to walk any amount of uh, distance, but they wanted to appease the jealousy that was burning within their heart. And um, we see that there's a lot of difference. And now um, these people, they were standing for their brother. 
they they could not just uh, leave him they 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 could not just uh, let him go they were standing for uh, their brother and uh, not just that the bible says that they were besieging for their brother now they were concerned about what their father was feeling and uh, they were concerned about uh, uh, being honest and not bringing any more loss to the family now these people were uh, they, there was a total total change uh, now jacob was again uh, connected to benjamin but now jacob was connected to joseph their attitude to joseph was totally different and uh, god changed their hearts and they became repentant and now jacob's uh, favorite was benjamin but now their attitude changed uh, their attitude totally changed towards benjamin it was because it was because uh, the lord was working and uh, situations were changing and uh, time brought them down um, broke their hearts uh, uh, it split over their uh, conscience uh, and spilled over guilt over all their life and that's where these people really really wanted to set things right uh, and the second thing we need to observe in this chapter especially uh, in 44th chapter is that uh, judah takes the lead in uh, chapter 43 and verse 3 and 8 we see that judah is taking the lead and he says judah and his brothers they traveled so now judah slowly began to take the lead and uh, we see great qualities of this man being mentioned here previously uh, you know the way judah dealt with joseph was very different genesis chapter 37 verse 26 and 27 it says uh, judah said to his brothers what will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood come let us sell him to the ishmaelites and not lay hands on him after all he is our brother our own flesh and blood his brothers they agreed so uh, he had a woe over his brothers and uh, he made them agree and he said why kill we can make some financial gain and so they sold him away he could easily part away with his brother easily throw him away for money and uh, you see that he was not very connected with his brothers even in genesis chapter 38 and verse 1 uh, at that time judah left his brothers and went to stay with a man of adullam named hira so we see that uh, judah uh, was was not very connected with his brothers but when you come to 44th chapter you see a lot of difference uh, in verse 14 it says while well, joseph was still in home when judah and his brothers came back uh, now judah was taking the lead in leading his brothers back now they could have easily gone because the steward was not after them at all the steward said um, we will only take we will only, not all, not even kill we will only take back those who, uh, the one who has the master's cup and uh, now they would only take away uh, benjamin and uh, the others could easily leave but now judah was not in a position to leave judah uh, took all his brothers and they all traveled back uh, you see that they traveled back verse by verse we can see a lot of changes in these people in verse 13 uh, it says they at this they tore their clothes uh, then they all loaded their donkeys and they all returned now few of them could have said okay somebody go settle this matter and come back but now they wanted to stick together they've already lost one person but they didn't want to lose more they all wanted to be glued together in this process in in bringing back benjamin they all wanted to do it together this was what the lord really wants from us how good and pleasant if brothers work in unity Psalm 133 and verse 1 the bible says so the lord wants us to be united work with unity you know the church's work god's work can never be done alone we need uh, people who can come together so these people are coming back and uh, finally they are standing before uh, joseph and now judah takes the lead in verse 18 and he starts to explain uh, even in verse 16 he talks to joseph now he was talking to uh, joseph the ruler of the land a very big man and he very clearly says in verse 16 how can we show you that we are innocent this is god has uncovered thy servant's guilt now judas guilt is now it's popping and vomiting out guilt his mistake is shown and he says god has done it now this man this man didn't didn't struggle to prove himself innocent but he accepts he very clearly blandly accepts that it was his mistake god has uncovered his guilt 
and he doesn't stop there um he goes on to say um that we have a father and now i cannot see the father die he he says that benjamin and the father are so closely bound with each other their lives are so bound with each other that i if at all if at all benjamin doesn't go then my father is going to be hurt my father may die previously also juda knew that this was the same situation with the father that joseph's life was very closely bound with the life of uh, jacob but he was very hard hearted and now we see a great transformation a great mediator uh, was being made in him and uh, he, he tells the he recites the entire episode and finally finally he says in verse 32 i guarantee to my father that i'll i'll take the blame all my life now please please let me remain here as a lord slave in the place of my brother uh, what a, what a, what an extent what an extra mile he's walking and he he's doing all that he can do and he says i will take the place of my brother uh, whatever punishment you inflict i'm ready to take it upon myself i will stay back send the boy because i cannot he says i cannot see my father's misery in verse 34 how can i go back to my father if the boy is not with me i don't want to bl- take this blame and um, do not let me see the misery that would come upon my father so we see that judah now becomes a man of concern judah now becomes a mediator judah now becomes a leader judah now becomes a, an intercessor judah now becomes somebody who is begging who is pleading who is standing in the stead uh, who who is taking the punishment upon him who is like becoming the uh, uh, savior of benjamin and uh, this turned the whole event uh, uh, towards a very very pleasant end uh, a beginnings need not be good a beginnings need not be glorious but when we repent when we change when we transform and when we are diligent when we are stuck together with God's people slowly the lord will work in us our end can be glorious though our beginnings are humble the bible says in job so uh, may we may we come to the lord and and rip uh, all our hypocrisy rip open all the uh, guilt that is being spilled by our conscience and straight surrender everything and um, uh, hand over everything into his hands and walk a, a new life with the uh, fellowship of the saints uh, so that we can please the heart of the father gracious heavenly father thank you thank you for the transformation in the lives of joseph's brothers thank you that you work so slowly but you so steadily thank you that when we are inflicted you change us through sorrows and through pains for the better so that we can become like you jesus wonderful precious name we pray amen mm-hmm.